During the Cold War, the Soviet Union forms an organization called Patriot. They chose representatives of the different nationalities of the Union and experimented on them to create a team of superheroes that would defend the motherland against any threat, even supernatural ones. However, a mysterious explosion destroyed the lab with the experiments, and all the superheroes plus the scientists that created them were never heard of again. In the present day, the Russian army is testing new robots that would allow them to fight without needing a human on the field thanks to their very advanced AI. The demonstration starts well, but suddenly, the robots turn around and start attacking their own team's tanks and helicopters. There's nothing human reflexes can do against them, and once all the vehicles have been destroyed, the robots attack the building with all the generals and technicians, leaving nobody alive. Once the smoke clears, it's revealed that the person behind this is Dr. Kuratov, one of the scientists behind the Patriot Project all those years ago. He's gained superpowers as well, and now he can generate electricity and control machines, so he takes the robots away with him. Sometime later, the Ministry of Defense holds a meeting to deal with the situation, and it's finally revealed what happened during the Cold War. In 1940, Kuratov was in charge of the Innovative Technologies Department in the Patriot Project. His main obsession was Module 1, a remote design to control any motorized vehicle. The experiment was a failure, and the project was shut down. Kuratov became extremely jealous of Victor, whose own genetic research impressed their higher-ups, and Kuratov decided to steal that research to conduct some underground experiments of his own. His goal was to outperform Victor and be recognized as a great scientist too. Many humans became biological victims of his work, and Kuratov was arrested, but he escaped anyway and hid in his genetics labs. The army decided to storm the lab, but Kuratov had transformed the place into a bomb, causing a massive explosion. They had thought he died there, but it turns out the chemicals released by the explosion altered his body and he became the Module 1 experiment he was obsessed with. To defeat him, they'll need to find the superheroes he made. Meanwhile Kuratov is sneaking inside one of the many army warehouses to steal all vehicles and resources he can find. After the meeting, the Ministry of Defense decides they'll reopen the Patriot organization under the charge of Major Lorena. She announces their superhero team will be called the Guardians and makes her people start researching any supernatural story they can find, be through rumors, viral videos, or tabloids. Once they have enough information, they begin traveling all over the place to find these superheroes, the first stop being in Armenia. In a hidden temple, Lur is living as a hermit, trying to leave his old life behind. When Larina approaches him to talk about the Patriot Project, Lur shows off his rock-controlling powers in a threatening way. He doesn't want anything to do with the Patriot Project because they played with him to then discard him, but he changes his mind when Larina informs him Kuratov is alive and Lur could get his revenge. Next, they travel to western Kazakhstan, where Khan is found meditating in the desert. When the agents approach him in armed vehicles, Khan activates his ghost powers, which allow him to move fast and undetected. He kills all the agents with his curved swords in seconds, and only stops when he sees Lur, who convinces him to join him for revenge. Their next stop is northern Siberia, where Asis is living in a cabin in the woods. As soon as she sees soldiers approaching, he transforms into his beast form and throws them all away, only calming down when he sees his old friends Lur and Khan. Asis wants revenge as well so he accepts to join. The final trip is to Moscow, where Xenia has become a famous performer. She uses her powers to perform in a pool where she becomes invisible underwater. One evening after a show, she finds Khan in her dressing room and immediately attacks him, showing off her fighting skills. Khan uses his ghost powers to get out of the fight and urges Xenia to remember her old friends, but Xenia refuses to listen. Lur shows up as well and Xenia immediately attacks him too, starting yet another pointless fight that Lur wins because he was the one that taught Xenia her moves. Asis cuts in and explains to her that they're all loners with superpowers who haven't aged in 40 years, just like her. So even if she doesn't remember them, she could join their cause to find out who did this to her. In the meantime, Kuratov finishes creating his very own clone army to carry on his plan. The Guardians return to the Patriot headquarters, where Xenia explains what happened to her. Her first real memory is from 1978, when doctors found her near Sevastopol. Nobody could identify her, and she only knows her name thanks to an engraved ring she had with her. Doctors said her memories would come back with time, but so far it hasn't happened. When Xenia noticed she didn't age, she knew other people would notice too, so she decided to travel around. Her powers include invisibility in water, thermo-resistant skin, and controlling her body's temperature in all conditions. At that moment, Larina's team announces they've found Kuratov in a junkyard that he's using as his command center, so they must use the element of surprise quickly before Kuratov sees them. When they arrive there, Xenia is happy to see it's raining because she'll be able to become invisible, but they also discover someone has jammed their signal and they can't communicate with headquarters. The team splits to attack from different spots, and Xenia walks in without a care. Unfortunately the guards have special goggles that allow them to see Xenia's body temperature and they immediately use special weapons to freeze her on the spot. Asis and Khan use their powers to kill as many guys as possible, however the guards are expecting this as well. When Khan stops moving, he's hit by a paralyzing dart, and Asis is captured by an unbreakable net. Inside the building, 
Lur uses a special trick to create a mini earthquake before covering his whole body with rocks. After he's done with the guards around him, Kuratov himself shows up, so Lur begins attacking him. His rocks are merely tickles for Kuratov, who immediately overpowers Lur and breaks his back. Moments later, Kuratov has Lur, Khan, and Asis inside a force field cell and explains he had been expecting them, so he armed his soldiers with the corresponding weapons. As the creator of their powers, Kuratov always knew their weaknesses. He asks the guardians to join him and gives them 24 hours to think about it, ignoring their claims that death would be preferable to working with him. Asis has a knife that he tries to use, but the force field stops him from moving. Afterward, Kuratov gathers the tanks he stole to start his invasion. Soon the whole city becomes a war zone and the news reports chaos everywhere, they also talk about a stolen space transmitter and the army being completely useless against these attacks. It turns out Kuratov actually made a deal with a spy in the army that got him access to the warehouses and the soldiers that protected his base, and now he intends to use the space transmitter to start his Module 2 project. The plan is to connect the transmitter to the Ostankino Tower and the Federation Tower and send a signal to the Russian satellite, which in return will allow him to control every other satellite and therefore all technology on Earth. When Kuratov begins taking away the towers, his army spy complains because he had been promised things wouldn't get out of control, but Kuratov just kills him. Meanwhile Larina rescues Lur and takes him back to headquarters. While he recovers, Lur tells Laren that when he passed out he had a vision of his daughter that reminded him of all the goods time he had with her and his grandchildren. Lur never aged but his kids did, and while his grandchildren left to travel the world, his daughter grew old and Lur had to watch her die. Sometime later, Larina receives a visit from Victor, Kuratov's old lab partner. Everyone thought he was dead, so Victor explains he's been hiding away all these years and only came out because he saw Kuratov on the news and he knew they would need his help to stop him. Victor immediately begins working on healing Lur and gives Larina the location of Kuratov's secret lab to rescue the others. The team quickly sneaks inside the lab, kills all the guards, and frees the guardians by simply shooting the keypad that kept the force field up. Khan feels so humiliated though that he just leaves the team. While Kuratov continues to move the towers around the city, Larina has a chat with Asis back in headquarters. Asis confesses he's worried about Xenia, who he has been watching over for a long time. After their initial escape during the war, Asis saw Xenia again eight years ago, but he realized she didn't remember anything and decided to keep his distance. He also worries about his transformations, which are getting wilder each day and make him afraid of possibly getting stuck in the beast form forever. Larina promises they won't let that happen and that Victor probably can find a cure. Speaking of Victor, he's in the secret lab studying Kuratov's clones when he's suddenly found by Kuratov himself. Still mad over the results of their war experiments, Kuratov accuses Victor of betraying him to work alone and swears he'll make the world see who the real genius is. Then he activates the traps in the lab, releasing a poisonous gas that kills Victor. Afterward, Kuratov goes to check on the installation of the space transmitter with the towers to get it started. The activation of this powerful machine causes Patriot's system to finally detect and understand Kuratov's plan. They send a bunch of fighter jets to stop him, but Kuratov simply makes the army robots shoot them, causing the planes to crash all over the city. This is watched by Khan from the top of a building, and Larina approaches him to see what's wrong. Khan confesses he used to have a brother he idolized because of how good he was as a fighter, but with time, Khan realized he became nothing but his brother's shadow and nobody believed in him. He accepted to be Kuratov's guinea pig to become stronger, and when he gained his powers, he challenged his brother to a fight. However Khan lost control and killed his brother without meaning to. Larina offers her sympathies, but also reminds him the city needs him. Once all the guardians are back together and well, Larina announces they've made new suits and weapons for them that fit their powers. Asis gets a cannon with a targeting system that connects directly to his nervous system and picks targets based on where his aggression is focused. When he starts to transform into full beast mode, the cannon then switches to fully automatic. Khan's new suit protects him from all kinds of physical damage, including bullets, blades, and tranquilizer darts. On the spinal area they installed a harpoon and reinforced rope. For Lur, they made a suit that gives him access to rocks all the time and a special whip that transforms his telekinetic ability to control rocks into electromagnetic impulses. Lastly, Xenia gets a suit that allows her to become invisible whenever she chooses, and she can make any object invisible with her by just touching it. The team begins training with their new weapons, and although there are some mishaps at first, with enough practice they gain full control and are ready to rumble. Kuratov is currently charging the towers to send the signal with a beam, so Patriot has an hour to do something. The team makes a plan to dismantle the tower's force field, after which they must escape as quickly as possible because the whole Moscow city complex will be destroyed by rocket launchers. Lur sneaks into Kurtov's work area by using the subway tunnels, where he easily beats up all the guards with his new whip. Asis and Xenia take on the guards on the streets, a fight that starts easy for them until more guards arrive. Xenia has to hide, but Asis allows his body to go full beast mode and finishes the fight without issues. Then Xenia rides Asis to meet with Lur at the mall, where Asis' size causes some trouble in the elevator. Khan approaches the tower by plane, and this time Pilot is ready to dodge the attacks coming from the army AIs. 
however he's having difficulty getting the plane close enough to jump. Asus, Lur, and Xenia reach the mall roof and begin crossing one of the many iron bars that are holding Kurtov's tower up to access it. Guards open fire on them from a parallel bar, making Asus slip. Lur activates his whip to make a shield, but he doesn't know for how long he'll be able to keep it up. Khan wants to help and decides to jump anyway, making up for the long distance by connecting a grapple line to the tower, which allows him to reach the bar with the guards and slice it to make the men fall. Meanwhile at Kurtov's lab, Larina finds Victor who still has a few minutes of life left. He tells Larina that he discovered the Guardians possess the ability to transfer their power to one another, and this merging increases their strength. That's why Kurtov had disabled Lur, since he was afraid those powers could split Earth in a half. This transference of energy is difficult to control, so they have to avoid making any wrong moves or it'll kill them. The Guardians enter the tower and after knocking out a few guards, they find the generator. The guys discuss options to disable it, but Xenia just goes for it and grabs it to short-circuit it with her body heat. It hurts her terribly, but it also manages to shut down the force field around the top of the tower, and Asus catches Xenia right before she falls. With the field down, the army wants to start bombing, but Larina asks them to wait so that the Guardians can get their revenge. The Guardians go to the top of the tower to fight Kuratov, but things don't go well. With his power, he easily disables Asus cannon and Lur's whip, and his strength takes care of Khan. Xenia dodges him just in time and touches Lur to make him invisible, this way he can use his whip again. Kuratov gets captured by the whip and Khan tries to kill him with his blades, but Kuratov is too strong and simply frees himself with a shockwave, pushing everyone back. Next Kuratov goes after Xenia, causing Asus to leave his cannon behind and enter full beast mode without caring about the consequences. Unfortunately Kuratov is still strong enough to knock him out with one hit. The army announces they can't wait anymore and sends their vehicles to blow up the area. As soon as Khan sees a plane flying by, he connects his grapple line to it, then he connects all the guardians to the line so they can be taken away. Kuratov notices this and uses his powers to make the plane lose control, prompting Khan to cut the line and release all the guardians in the river before the plane crashes. At that moment the army finally launches its missiles, but Kuratov laughs and makes them explode in the sky before they can even reach him. As Kuratov finally begins making contact with the satellite, Larina meets with the guardians by the river and tells them what she learned from Victor. The guardians decide to take the risk and concentrate all their power on Lur, who charges a blast of energy that he shoots at the tower, instantly destroying it and all the buildings that surround it. It also causes Kuratov to fall to his doom. The newscasts report the city has been saved, but nobody knows the cause of this supposed terrorist attack and they're waiting for the defense minister to hold a press conference later. They also think it was the armed forces that saved the day with some secret weapon. Efforts to rebuild are getting started as well. Larina expresses gratitude towards the Guardians for their help, but the Guardians announce they're going back to their boring lives, especially Xenia, who has remembered the source of her ring. However they promise they'll come if big trouble happens again. Before they leave, Larina tells them they found more Guardians. Sometime later in the middle of the night, two men stop a van from which Larina comes out. She quickly fights them, and once they're under her threat, she makes them confess they were sent by someone named Ferrum. Hearing this name leaves Larina worried. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.